Welcome to the Art of Slowing Down to Quantum Leap podcast that I created especially for conscious introvert entrepreneurs. And if you desire to grow and quantum scale without the hustle and are ready to discover the missing pieces to effortlessly running a solar line business, then this is for you. And I'm your host, Annalena Fuchs, a human design and energetic alignment coach. And my mission with this podcast is to provide you with a shortcut to your most aligned path to success and financial freedom using a powerful combination of human design, science, and spirituality. And I myself have shifted from working nine to five to now enjoying the freedom of creating things on my own terms. And I want to help you do the same. Welcome everybody, it's Annalena here. Welcome to another episode of the Art of Slowing Down to Quantum Leap podcast. And today I have another very exciting guest with me. Her name is Emmy Britton. And I'm just going to share a little bit about her bio. Then we will take it away and have a beautiful conversation. So Emmy is an energetic neural integration therapist and the owner of Kin Energetics. And she has experienced a perfectly winding journey from being raised in a conservative and evangelic evangelic cult to moving overseas to home birthing and paradigm shifting her way into a massive spiritual awakening that led to embracing her divine purpose as an energy healer and facilitator. And she is now a guide for individuals with an undeniable desire to connect to themselves, their soul, their source and their true nature in a deeply healing way. So I think that's just such a beautiful introduction, especially for this podcast. So welcome, Emmy. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And actually, like, um, your story is very impressive, you know, because you you were like in a cult. This is something I know now actually a couple of people like, do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I would consider it a cult. Um, Mm-hmm. And and I guess <laughs> as cults go, maybe on the lighter side of, mm-hmm. of cultish, um, but definitely a religious um, experience until I was 16. That was um, we're the only ones that are right. Everybody else is wrong. And there were very strict rules. There was very we actually got kicked out of it um, when I was 16. And that's why we left, because my dad just posited some questions and had some new ideas um mm. and then have to get us labeled as heretics and thrown out so um mm. is is quite an intense you know we had good friends but at the same time there was a lot of brainwashing a lot of a very very cultish environment there yeah so. yeah no thank you for sharing that and I'm, i mean i'm glad to to hear that it wasn't only you and your it wasn't like a situation where your family was all for it but but it was like your whole family kind of left right right yeah my family stuck together for sure and it was mm-hmm. because my dad was a more a more free thinker um yeah. and he wanted to he wanted to be more exploratory mm-hmm. you know yeah I love yeah. That. yeah thank you for sharing that and that really deeply resonates with me because you know we are kind of in the spiritual world here what we often call like woo woo and you know <laughs> and if you ask me like we're spiritual people we're spiritual coaches and all of it however you want to put the name tag on it but I remember myself from growing up um I actually grew up without any kind of religion like my my parents had actually left church and then my mom started to explore different religions and things like that and I I had when you were saying this like they were right about everything and everybody was wrong that is always like no matter what group what what um movement or religion or however you want to call it what this is is always a red flag for me because to me any kind of religion or however you want to call it is perfectly fine when it respects what other people believe and or how they want to see it right and it always goes back to to love unconditional love and compassion mm-hmm. so um i'm really glad that your dad you know spoke up and started to question because we humans we have all the right in the world to ask questions right and if we cannot even ask questions like I guess our freedom is very limited yeah 
For sure. And that is, it does for me all come back to love. And that's why, uh, that's a huge reason why I do what I do now, because I did discover, I almost felt, you know, evangelical circles talk about being reborn uh, spiritually, but I do truly feel reborn spiritually now because Mm. I do direct access to divine power and I use it and I use Mm. it on people's physical and subtle bodies for good, you know, and that to me is so much it resonates with me so much more on a deeper level than sitting in a pew, you know, trying to feel something because some somebody told me to. <laughs> yeah. 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 And can you tell us a little bit about the, um, so it's called energetic neural integration therapist. That's kind of your, your title. Can you, can you share with me and the audience a little bit about what that is and who you work with, how you can help them? Yeah, for sure. Um, it took me a while to sort of land on that title. I feel really comfortable with that um, because it is something that people don't normally hear about, I think. So it's it's something that's a little hard to explain right off the bat, you know, if you're not familiar mm-hmm. with it. So what it is, is um, it's neural integration to integrate life events, past traumas, things that have happened to your physical structure, things um in your psyche all of it so it's a whole body experience um i'm dealing with auric auric layers and and the whole the whole thing mm-hmm. um approaching from a holistic way and sort of moving out stagnation from the system mm-hmm. um and i do that using life energy life force power and um and really just help release the body systems from whatever they need release from um yeah. Do you, I mean, normally I go with people's questions and what they have about mm-hmm. what I, um, there's a little light touch involved. There's a lot of hands off. It's mostly hands off and I can be anywhere from, you know, a quarter inch away from the body to 10 feet away from the body working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you mostly like people see you in person? Yeah, right now I do. I'm going to move to some online. I have done some distance healing facilitation before, but um, I currently don't normally I offer it it's just for you know mm-hmm. friends in the hospital or something but um yeah I, I practice in Nashville at a holistic chiropractor's office um rent space from them and 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 do a lot of in-person work I love that beautiful um and now we want to we're actually going to dive deeper now a little bit into some strategies for a more peaceful life and I also want to share with everybody that's listening we will also in a little bit talk a little bit about Emmy's human design um, which is, we want to just share, like you're very new to it, right? So you don't know much about it yet. And um, she did, she was so graceful and sent me her chart before we got on the, rec- I mean, the session here. Um, and we will also talk a little bit about that um, because I know most, or many of you may be still very new to human design. So this is also going to be helpful. And just to give you a hint, she's also a manifesting generator. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but a three, six, right? Is your profile, I think. Yes. Okay, there's going to be a lot of experimentation in your life, let me tell you. Oh, and your conscious, <laughs> but hold on, your conscious son is the 35, right? I think yes. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the one thing I'm going to tell you right now. you got to experiment the heck out of life. That's what I've been doing, even though I didn't know what my human design was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and that's when you would trust ourselves. It's like even experimenting with a religion because you learn what works and what doesn't. So that's mm-hmm. the most important because you are. Being a manifesting generator is all about experimentation and the three line and the six line is all about experimentation, especially mm-hmm. in the first 30 years of life. Um, and the 35 is actually the gate of experiment. So mm. you have like, not everybody has that. It's so strong in your chart, that energy. So, mm. um, but before we go deeper into some other elements of that, I would love to talk to you about now, because we are talking about, you know, here we talk about slowing down and and the work you do i think without slowing down is not even possible right and and we humans we're all after this seek for fulfillment and often people think it's the money they're after but really what we are after is is peace of mind right so i know that you're quite an expert with some of the strategies how to create a more peaceful life and i would love for you to to share them. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, the majority of clients that I see that come in are 
you know, we'll have a, we'll have an initial session and they tell me what's going on with their lives and, and this and that. And, and it all, they never say it, but it all leads back to, they want a more peaceful life. That's what everybody wants. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my first, um, the first thing I guess I want to talk about with that is um, developing a relationship with yourself, because I think that that's just critical. You can't, you I don't I don't believe maybe maybe other people, you know, can do it differently than I can. But to me, accessing your sense of worth and your value and truly like falling in love with yourself as if you were another person um, is the key. It's like a huge gateway in life to diving deeper and healing on such uh, on a level maybe you didn't even know is possible. Mm. So um this concept of developing a relationship with yourself is kind of something I've been working on for the past maybe two years, really, really purposefully. Um, because I heard something once and it struck me as weird. And so, and it kind of was a little bit triggering. So I was like, Oh, I should sit with that and think about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what it was, was somebody saying, um, do you feel about yourself the same way as you feel about your best friend? or about your, your husband, your spouse, your, your mom, your children. And at first it's like, wow, no, no, you know, like my children, no. <laughs> and then after you sit with that a while, it's like, well, why not? Like, I'm the person that I've been in relationship with the longest. In my life, right? you know? And that would be the longest relationship of all my life. Right, right. And, um, you know, what you give to other relationships flow from this relationship with self. It's just pivotal. You, I, I just don't think you can do without it and do well as far as maintaining peace in your life. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that that's that's on the forefront of what I want to talk about, because um, I, I guess as far as developing practices maybe some people might feel a little bit lost like well how do I how do I do that how do I fall in love with myself you know how do I put my worth and my value as equal to other people without feeling like it's selfish or egotistical yeah. right yeah yeah the word selfish it's funny right before you said it I thought about it because we yeah. have this like oh you're selfish to just want to do a day just for yourself you should be taking care of xyz and exactly but i i have to tell you like i cannot agree with you more that um i mean for other relationships for even for for us being women in business right like everything the foundation is the relationship with ourselves right mm -hmm. everything always takes us back there so what i love that you said which is such a big nugget of wisdom is that you were so wise that when you got triggered that because often people think oh trigger is something bad and but a trigger is the healing opportunity it's like ah there's something for me here to look deeper so yeah. that's thank you for sharing that yeah um yeah, I, I lost my train of thought. I was agreeing so hard with you. <laughs> That's good. We're, we're here to slow down, people. So <laughs> we're slow. <laughs> yeah. Even though we are manifesting generators, right? you see, guys, we can also be very calm and slow. So, <laughs> but let's let's. Um, I think you were talking about. You know, the first step is really to have the relationship for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and you were, I think you were mentioning like people are wondering like, okay, how am I going to do this? So what, what are some practical ways that people can start to implement? I think the first thing has to be uh, giving yourself mercy, um, sort of extending grace to yourself. And I don't know why it's so hard for us to do that because, you know, you can look back on your whole life. You can look at the, your child self, your teenage self, your self in your twenties, your thirties, whatever. And you can, you can just be so negative about it. And that happens almost subconsciously. We don't mean to do it. We're just very self-critical. You know, that's how we're hardwired, it seems like. And to to rewire that is really magnificent because if you can say, well, wait, why am I being, why am I approaching myself critically when I know better than anyone else on the planet exactly why I did the things I did? I know the, the things that happened to me. I know the players that were involved. You know, I can, I can, if, if you can obs um, 
objectively sort of assess the the events of your life then you can see you know like i was just a child i was you know and there's there's it's not it's not that you're not taking responsibility for things that you yourself have done um but it's it's just extending grace to yourself to say you know i can see why that happened because honestly if you have a best friend or you have a spouse or a lover or your mother or father you can look at it more objectively than with yourself because mm. you can extend so much grace and so much mercy to people that you love but if you are not in love with yourself you can't you can't extend that grace to yourself and view your past view the all of these events of your life in that light mm. so i think the first key is to just start viewing yourself as a friend by becoming more objective about what's happened and yeah. what you've done and you know yeah i think it's all about forgiveness right to, mm -hmm. to like like what came to my mind when you were talking is like we sometimes lose it and we get angry or we say certain things to people we didn't want to say we react in the moment or we didn't take the action we knew we had to take right and then we we keep judging ourselves we ha we hold the regret And with other people, we we are more like, no, not a big deal. It's okay. Come on. You know, you're just a human. But <laughs> that's not really like what we do with ourselves so much. And mm -hmm. uh, and also like in, in human design, um, it, it actually it's actually like so so the, the conscious sun that I have, the, the most prominent energy in my chart is it's called the gate 13. And in that energy is actually forgiveness. And the go it goes back really to forgiving myself most of all that's why everything that you were just saying um it really deeply resonates so yeah and it's not that you're not taking i mean i i take radical responsibility for my life that's where i'm at right now mm. and for instance i had um i kind of did a review of my life to see who i had purposefully hurt recently mm. and it came back to just one childhood relationship where I had sort of been a bully, not really meaning to, but because sort of everybody had teamed up on this one family in our church and my parents spoke really badly of them. You know, like I was hearing it and I was a very small child. Um, and so I started sort of being a bully to this one girl. Well, I reached out recently. I went on a walk in the woods and, and called her, left her a message and, and just said, look, you know, I see objectively, I extend myself grace. And I apologize at the same time because, you know, I can see now objectively how that all came about. Mm -hmm. However, I still take radical responsibility for that, yeah. even though it was modeled to me, even though I was mimicking, even, you know, even though I was a, a small child, mm -hmm. it's still my responsibility to extend that to you, yeah. you know, and to say I was wrong and I did this. So I'm not saying, you know just <laughs> abandon all responsibility yeah. i'm just saying you can offer yourself grace while you're growing from your mistakes yeah. and moving forward yeah yeah i know i love that um and, and i mean that's that could be a whole episode in itself to talk about the the subject of bullies because i al always know that if when somebody is bullying somebody because it happens in schools with kids a lot right the kid that is being being the bully is often the most hurt because they want to be loved they want to be seen they want to feel safe and most often they don't have that at all in some way and somehow that's the only way they know how to to get attention or anything of like that right but but i love how you put it into perspective with like you know it's not like about making everything right that i did but just taking responsibility for it You know, maybe there are uh, certain ways, like you said, you called your friend to apologize and like, hey, this probably was not correct. Um, but not in a way like, I'm sorry, like disempowered, but in an empowered way, like, hey, this is what happened. I can't change the past. Totally probably wasn't right for me to do that. I now understand. And why you forgive yourself and like, it's okay. Like, that's the best I could do with the tools I had at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that actually turned into a really beautiful thing. Like she eventually saw the messages and listened to them and replied. And then we had an hour long phone conversation about our oh, childhood and nice. she's coming to town soon. So we're going to meet up. And it's like, you know, this big thing that I thought was in my past was actually just this beautiful 
thing waiting to bloom you know so yeah yeah, yeah. and also i can only imagine it probably took you a lot of courage right to take that step yeah it did yeah i thought about it for about a year first <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I think so often we don't do the things because, again, we're humans, we have this fear of rejection or all the things, right? So I love that you knew that was the right step to take in your heart. And through facing the uncomfortable, you know, you both now have this beautiful, it's a healing for both of you, I can only imagine, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, because we were in the same church situation as well so we were able yeah. and we both got out of it in sort of the same way and we didn't know it and we both are in this sort of the same point in life so it's just you know it's all divine timing too yeah and I, I really feel like just you sharing this little story right now I mean it has really the potential to change so many people's lives mm -hmm. you know just that that you show to people like have the courage to do what you know in your heart is right even though it's not easy mm -hmm. right because when we always go with <clears throat> choosing the comfortable, I really feel like we're missing out on the beauty of life and healing is not happening in the comfortable, right? Yeah, I've almost made it a responsibility to follow fear at this point because it's mm -hmm. always huge growth. You know, talk about quantum leaping. If you go for the fear, then you're you're leaping <laughs> all yeah. the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and comfort is sort of a, a sinkhole. Yeah, it's like a, we want to stay stuck, stay comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, I love that. And actually, because I often also talk about, well, let it be easy. And just like in my business at this point, I, I let things be easy. But that does not mean that I don't get uncomfortable. You know, there's mm -hmm. like a, it's not like this black or white because true growth and this quantum leaping definitely, I, I can attest, happens from being with the things that are really really uncomfortable and not reacting in the moment or running away from it yeah i love that beautiful so so now this is the first step like this whole thing about developing a relationship with yourself and i kind of love i think just a story you shared in itself is so helpful for people and then what are some other ways um so the the biggest one for me personally in my life has been um, establishing a breathwork practice, um, active breathwork and neural integration. My entire journey to be the person that I am now started with neural integration. Um, so when my, when Can my you oldest... evolve on the term neural integration, what that actually means? Yeah, of course. Um, so it's, it's basically care where you are removing blocks from your system. Um, you're making space in your system. Um, and then it, it can be, some people do it different ways. So my mentors do a lot of, they have a chiropractic background that they do it with. Um, and I have an energetic background. So it can be done different ways, but basically mm -hmm. um, you're making space for reflection within your system. Um, and it actually stimulates the fibers in your brain that make integration happen, which is bringing disparate things together cohesively. So you can, um, you can integrate traumas in your life, whether that's mental, physical, psychological, um, just things that your body needs to work through that it never did. Um, if you're familiar with somatics, it's, it's similar. Mm -hmm. um, and when those fibers in your brain are stimulated, you grow gradually grow more and more resilience so you can rewire your brain and also develop more resilience and that resilience is what lends you a lot more peace in life mm -hmm. um awesome. yeah so it's all subconscious you know it's, it's happening subconsciously you know and, and your nervous system is beginning to rewire itself beginning to to clear out old patterning and and develop new patterning for the way that you actually want to live your life yeah you're falling back into the same routine it's it's like um and this can happen with breath work as well you know that's a powerful way to access your subconscious for rewiring but it's it's basically like if you think of a wheat field and you think about walking through a wheat field one time and then there's a few stalks been over you know you can kind of see where you're going if you're trying to make a change in your life that's the metaphor i'm using but if you walk it again you know more stalks bend over 
you walk it again and again and again and again, and again then there's a trail, you know, yeah. and that's sort of the way that neural integration happens, um, that you can, you know, develop these new systems that you're wanting to develop in your life. And, and what, what comes to me as you speak, it's like, it sounds like a slow but steady way that is safe for the nervous system where it where you don't put it in, into like a shark like oh i'm gonna get the more uh, the lone more the more <laughs> the long <Yeah. laughs> tongue twister um i'm gonna cut up all the grass so i can go but no i'm gonna like slowly walk and then i walk again and again and again and again and then the the, the path is clear and it's a new way that i'm seeing or i'm seeing right. myself the, the possibilities that are there And that's so, I'm, I'm glad you said that because every client is different with this type of thing because you'll have clients that um, their systems are very closed and very tight and it could be, you know, a variety of reasons, but um, there's, for instance, a, an, an older person in my life who I, I work on regularly and um, there's a lot of, of built up stuff there that mm -hmm. is never accessed, that's never even... Um, that this person is not even open to yeah. access, you know, it, like mentally, definitely like <laughs> it's a conscious decision to not open that up yeah, because, because it doesn't feel safe. And so she can get a lot of pain relief out of sessions. Mm. And now other clients who, you know, you can just tell when they walk through the door, it's like, okay, let's go, you know, and mm. they're just open, like wide open. And mm. that way, you know, anything can happen in it. Anything can happen. They can just make these massive leaps in just a few sessions. And like, it's exactly what you said. It's what's, what's, it's what your body needs. It's what's safe for your nervous system. It meets you where you are because it is you. Mm. We're just, we're just facilitators of the process. Yeah. Your, your body is the one doing the work. Your, your being is holistically just healing itself. Mm. We're being yeah. guy. Yeah. And I, I love what you say, because it's especially because also in the sp spiritual world, we talk so much about healing and energy healing modalities and other things. And also this term quantum leaping right now. I find it sometimes a little bit dangerous because people feel like they need to make it happen faster. And mm. if they see one person seemingly quantum leap, they're like, what's wrong with me that I'm not going so fast? And I think it's so important that everybody knows like you have your own unique journey and whatever you are ready for, your body will tell you, will guide you, you know, and, and like this older person you were talking about, there may be a reason. It may not be safe for them at this age and where they're at mm -hmm. physically, because I know for myself, when I have huge energy releases, I'm tired. I'm ex you have detox symptoms, right? It's, it's like being mm -hmm. on a juice detox, you get headaches and you, you, when I relax and rest and have to drink a lot of water and it's like we're flushing out the toxins. So um, yeah, your body knows and, and trust that. And, and also these quantum leaps, they happen when we least expect it. I also, <laughs> right? Because like, if I used to be like, I have to do this and I have to move faster and I have to do X, Y, Z to quantum leap, that never happened. But then when I was like, I'm going to slow down, I'm going to do what I like and do it differently than anybody else is telling me. And I didn't expect anything. I was just having my good time. Then like, boom, this happened. This happened. Oh, this is how you quantum be. So I guess it's be fun. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, I guess uh, to backtrack just a little bit, you were reminding me through some things you were saying. Um, I, I started doing a breathwork container. Um, when my second son was born, I was having neck pain coming back up and stuff. And it was in the middle of the pandemic or at the start of the pandemic. And I had a newborn, so I didn't want to be out of the house and stuff. So I contacted my chiropractic friends who are neural integration people as well. And um, they offered me a six week breathwork course. And that's when I got started with that. And I mean, I had past life regression experiences during that, I, that were life changing like totally paradigm shifting experiences wow. during breath work um, because my system was open and ready to receive it. It was, it was just ready to roll. And, um, and, and that really changed my life. Breath work changed my life. And I do it now for pain relief routinely. If anything's going on, I do it, you know, once a week just for maintenance because it makes you feel amazing. Talk about 
having a peaceful life, you know, I think breath work is absolutely essential. If you don't have a neural integration specialist, you can do breath work at home, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I would like to talk a little bit more about this because we always also think like, oh, because I don't have the money, I can't afford the healer or whatever. I want to remind everybody, you all have breath. Yes. If you're listening to this, you're alive, you're breathing. And I know this for myself. Um, also, keep working on that. Um, we're not using our breath properly. We're constantly, I think, 95% of the time in fight or flight because we have a very shallow breath. So, and when we properly breathe, we act the we activate the rest and digest the parasympathetic nervous system where we can actually activate the healing in the body and open ourselves up to release and stuff is right now. Yeah. And could you could you share a couple of a one of like if you say breath work, like people are gonna probably wonder, like, okay, but how? How how am I supposed to be breathing? Is there yeah. a specific one that you have that you can share that people can do at home? I usually do, um, I do pretty long sessions myself, um, mm -hmm. so talking about, you know, about 45 minute sessions where you're, where you're going into, um, you know, almost a hyperventilating state several times and then giving yourself, you know, a lot of calming space in between. And then I have an, an integration session at the end where it's just mm -hmm. peaceful for about 10 minutes. Um, sometimes you fall asleep, sometimes you don't. So that's the type that I do for myself. And that's the type that I offer my clients. That's what it looks like. Um, but there's lots of things you can do. And if you, you know, get on YouTube, like you're saying, your breath is free. YouTube is free. Um, you know, you can get on Wim Hof, especially has some really great techniques. Um, and of course, his cold water stuff is a whole nother yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool, but, he's a cool guy. Yeah, wonderful stuff from him um, with breath work that's, that's free to access. Um, and a lot of people, when you say breath work, they're like, well, what do you, what do you mean? You know, like they think it's a little short thing that you can do. Um, you can do, you know, breath of fire, which is really quick breaths over and over and over. And you can do that in four or five minutes in the morning and that'll really light you up. You know, you can do closing one nostril and then closing the other nostril, doing quick breaths, nostril breathing. Um, and that stimulates different things energetically within your body as well to do, to do that. So there's all different types and I would encourage listeners to just get on, get on the Google machine and, yeah. and explore because really what's going to work for one person is, is going to, you know, there's going to be a variety of things that work yeah. and people have different times that they're, they can commit to a practice like that, et cetera. Yeah. No, I love that because I recently also, I'm also, I don't know if you know much about it, but the gene keys is also something close to human design. And um, they also talk a lot about the breath and they intentionally don't teach a particular breath work practice because Richard Rudd, he's the person that brought the gene keys out into the world. He says that um, I'm not doing it because everybody has their own breath or the, the, the way it works for them and they will discover that. So I love that you say, Go out and Google it and see which breathwork modality resonates. You will feel it in your body, right? And, yeah. and it's not like there's only one modality that is the holy grail of everything. No, it's like whatever works for you. And I want to add on to that, that several years ago, I was at a ashram, like a yogi. We did like a day and very wise, right? The wisdom you receive. And I do remember him also. He literally said, the 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 breathing system our lungs and the breathing that's that's the most untapped potential we humans have that's where all the healing mm. is. And, and that's where yeah sorry that's i was just gonna say that's where god is i mean mm -hmm. and no matter what you believe you know what you call god source creator that's where it mm -hmm. is you know and that's we have the breath of life in our bodies doesn't matter which you know religious thing you're from mm -hmm. It's the breath of life. It's what maintains us. It's what's that's where that's where your life force power resides. It's 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 in your breath. And we all you know, it's all there's a reason why we all have it. And it's free because mm -hmm. it's in it's inherent in who yeah. we are. Yeah, I love that so much.
Beautiful, beautiful. And then I think you mentioned also something about pleasure. About yes. Um, yeah, pleasure is a practice. I think it just ties in really beautifully if you're if you're wanting to have a peaceful life. I find a lot of people, and at one point, of course, myself, um, have a hard time sitting with pleasure. Um, and it doesn't, pleasure is not, I'm not referencing sexuality per se, because pleasure is everywhere, right? You can, you can just really enjoy a tiny part of your day and just <laughs> find a lot of pleasure in it. But when that comes up, whether it's, you know, the taste of your food or looking at the treetops moving in the wind, are you, are you staying with that feeling or are you saying, yeah, that's really pretty up there. I'm moving on, you know, because I have some things to do. I have, you know, and are you allowing that busyness to take over or are you slowing down enough to stay with pleasure? And I think that's a, that's honestly a game changer. It sounds simple at first, but it's not. And the more you allow pleasure and the more you stay with that feeling of pleasure throughout your day, even in tiny, tiny things, mm. um, then, then that frequent, that's the frequency that you're expanding on. Right. And then you're bringing in more pleasure into your life and it's expanding mm. and expanding and it's giving you peace. Mm. Yeah. I, I can like, I'm nodding. I'm nodding. I can't <laughs> see right now when I'm nodding. Uh, absolutely yeah because like I actually yeah especially like for example when you eat right when you savor the the flavors of the food and or taking a bath or and of course also with sexuality like I, yeah. I can share from my own experience I used to be um you know like I think orgasms is something we can say is pleasure in a way and I used to like oh I had one and then I'm like okay now it's enough and I can't do that, <laughs> right like and, and now I you know I, I can have like 20 in an hour or something and I'm, yeah. I'm in this pleasure wave and I'm like can feel it all over my body but it took me really some time to get there and practice and and actually allow it you know to 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 stay in that pleasure frequency and actually I recently started to envision my dreams hearts desires in those states and I'm just kind of excited what's going to come out of that <laughs> because i believe mm. it's a very powerful manifestation state right to like right find that pleasure and like yeah so it's it's um yeah because i, I was really con almost scared of feeling the pleasure is mm. because we're not used to it right we're so used to kind of a dullness and more stuck in in like um yeah, worrying constantly about everything in life and and because that's what our subconscious gets used to it so when we start mm -hmm. to be more and like having fun and pleasure we get okay this is too good to be true what's going to happen like it cannot but what if we can also build like just with a field when you were talking about right like we can also mold that path and and hang out more in the pleasure zone right right yeah and it can just i mean if you let it and if you have the capacity, which is, you know, doing the breath work, doing, doing the neural integration and, you know, developing a relationship with yourself, because especially sexually, you have to have that relationship with yourself. Oh, yeah. To be able to open to that level. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so so it all ties in. And yeah, even if it's, you know, feeling the texture of fabric, you know, just like, you know, if you have a fluffy blankie or something. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> it feels like, so good. <laughs> yeah, just stay with it, you know, and just be open to receiving it i don't know if you um lacy haynes have you do you follow lacy haynes no. oh my gosh i think you'd love her um and your I'll audience probably out, would yeah. <laughs> yeah but she she actually has a course she offers called manifestation which is mm -hmm. exactly what it sounds like but yeah. it's that you know she works a lot with people on developing your capacity to stay with pleasure stay in joy you know stay in enjoyment of your life just because things are difficult or not exactly where you would want them to be or you don't really like your job doesn't mean you can't touch your, you know, shirt and be like, wow, I can sense that. I can feel it between my fingers. That's like a nice feeling. I'm going to stay with that. You know, you know, I know, mm -hmm. and I know it sounds silly in the grand scheme of things, maybe, but it's not. It is you're putting out vibes that you want more of that. Mm hmm. No, it's I love it. Reminding me like my daughter, she loves when I 
scratch her arm or her back. <laughs> like she's like she literally like I can her whole body relaxes and I, I could do it for hours. Uh, yeah, so actually, I think I need to do it more now that I'm like because <laughs> at least she's allowing it, and we don't want to learn for them that it's not okay, right? We want to actually encourage it more so they can they can allow that yeah and i love it because this is not something like oh you have to make it complicated or mm -hmm. even like because people may may think they have to have the most amazing um sex life to have pleasure no this can start with every day you have the opportunity right and it's it's for us yeah. also we need to look for it right where can i maybe wake up in the morning and like hey how can i experience my pleasure today i'm open for it and then let it yeah. come and you know you you have the power too to call in what you want and something that i just recently started this past week and it's been amazing mm -hmm. was i have small children two and a half and six and i get overwhelmed sometimes oh yeah right <laughs> because it's overwhelming Not easy. <laughs> and so i started my day the second my eyes open in the morning i say i only allow the frequency of love and peace to enter and exit my system Mm. or my field you know mm. and so you can call in whatever you want and that's been so powerful when I start feeling mm. overwhelmed through the day I've tried tons of techniques I've taken parenting classes I've done the whole oh, thing yeah, yeah, right. but it's, it's still always going to be hard to have small children it just is yeah. um or difficult not hard but um you know when I when I sense that coming on through the day it's like I only invite the frequencies of love and peace to enter and exit my field because of what I'm saying. And, and, it, and it just, it's almost like magic. I mean, it has resolved things that I've been working so hard on. And like you say, if you slow down, sometimes you can just call in ease. It doesn't have to be so difficult. You have the power to say what you're calling in and magnetize that. And I'm claiming the power for my output as well to my children. Yeah. I mean, this is beautiful because this brings us back to like, let it be easy because also this whole like healing and like you said I'm taking all the parenting classes and we're looking for all the <laughs> solutions on the outside this is I need this and I need to yeah but it's within us and it's just through setting a simple intention you know and yeah. if you ask for it you shall be given I mean we have learned that yeah. right? so thank you for sharing that I, I think I'm gonna I wrote it down <laughs> <laughs> I only invite um uh, the frequency of love and peace to enter and exit my system, right? It's like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean. And you can call in anything. You can call in pleasure. You know, the frequency of pleasure. Yeah. Frequency, you know, whatever it is you want in your yeah. life or need. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah, that's a very powerful way to set intentions in general, and especially mm -hmm. when we start the day. So thank you for sharing that. So thank you so much for sharing all this goodness. And so now just. For just a few more minutes, um, if you would like, we can talk a little bit about your human design because especially this pleasure part is, you're going to love it. <laughs> Let me tell you this, like what it means <laughs> to be a manifesting generator. So you want to hear a little bit about that? Yeah, go for it. Okay, perfect. So being a manifesting generator basically means that, number one, we are like, we, we are by nature multi-passionate people. Like we have lots of interests and we actually do really well doing multiple things like we, we used to thrive if we only knew the one thing all of our life like we get very very bored and um it's for you also to give yourself permission to explore different things in life right um and then the other thing is like because you also you have lots of ideas and inspirations all the time right as you know um and actually i think now i'm gonna look at your chart well you have undefined head and ash now these are those centers at the top they're white in your chart i have that too so we feel sometimes actually a lot of pressure as you do this and that and da, 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 da. so we can also get too busy doing all the things and they get very stressed so what human design teaches us is that your mind is not here to make decisions it doesn't happen here with the logic and the thinking it really happens in the body and for you to know if something is meant to be for you Let's say you have this idea tomorrow. I want to write a book, you know, or I want to I want to create a course about um, my breathwork practices for people to do it at home. Let's use that one. And instead of jumping on it and making it happen because you had the idea in the moment, you're gonna be like, "All right, universe, I have this idea. If it's meant for me, give me a sign. I'm letting it go energetically, but show me." 
And then if something is meant to be for you, you will get something in life. It could be another person asking you maybe a day later or maybe two weeks later, or you see something on social media next day about breath work. Or somebody's asking you, and then let's say I'm going to ask you, hey, Emmy, do you want to, why don't you create an online course for, you know, stay home moms so they can incorporate more peace and freedom in their, in their life. And then it would be in your gut, like in your belly area, this feeling. And it's a little bit different for anybody, but it's most likely like an expansive feeling where it's like, oh, it's like, it's like a pleasure in a way where it's like, it's turning you on from mm. your gut. And that's your sign that this is most likely for you, right? Mm. And oftentimes we have this, but we don't trust it. I was like, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. I shouldn't do it. Da, 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 da. And for you, because you are a emotional authority manifesting generator so what that means basically is that when it comes to making really big decisions in life you have um you don't want to rush things so if something is really a big decision means there's you're investing a lot of time energy or money into something because let's say you create an online course you know you may have to set some boundaries at home and there's sometimes you're not available so it's going to impact people as well and it may be like a three months project as an example. So even though let's say your sake will respond at like an uh-huh and like, yeah, if it's good, you kind of still like, all right, let me feel into it. Let me be with it. And you have what we call an emotional wave and yours, and you tell me if that resonates, yours is it's kind of a high, high, low, low wave where like all of a sudden out of the calm, she's laughing, she's like, <laughs> all of a sudden you have like this high or this low and you don't even know what <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god you guys you should see this <laughs> this is what i love the most about human design right like we never met before i mean we connected on this program <laughs> and she just sent me her chart and she's like yeah spot on and it, it can be very melancholic energy oh yeah and yeah. many many people especially with that wave my partner actually has the same wave um they think there's something wrong with them Mm. Like, why am I feeling so low all of a sudden? I don't even know exactly why. But you can also have the high where you're like extremely funny and very good mood and <laughs> it almost like too much sometimes for other people. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and so for you, what is important to know when you're in the high or the low, don't ever make a big decision. It's a no no. Mm. For you, it's important that let's say your sacral responded with a yes and you're kind of in a high and like all excited and then you're in the low and it could take a week it could take a uh, several days um you can also if you like kind of track your mood over over a month to kind of see that there may be a pattern usually it is for people which is probably unique to yourself um that if throughout the entire wave that you're feeling until you're back in, in a really neutral space it kept being a yes in your body you know, but if in that high and low, it was kind of like, mm -hmm, and then uh -uh, and kind of going back and forth, it's not a clear yes. And that's basically then for you, like, okay, right now it's not the time for me. It's maybe never for me, or it's just not the time yet for me. Right. But if something is really meant for you, you know, after riding out that wave, and once you're back in the neutral space, you then make that decision and then usually things just work out very well if if you decide against it and try to push it and force it even though your gut feeling is not really a clear yes it, it turns often into a little disaster you know and and what well, yeah. running right now like, <laughs> we, we have probably experienced that like yeah. anytime we don't trust ourselves like it doesn't work out and when we really trust ourselves and give ourselves also that self-compassion to especially like in in the spiritual world or coaching space i see this so much and i feel like it's so wrong this like fast action bonus you have 24 hours to make a decision and then like oh yeah yeah that does not work for the majority of people mm. it's totally against the energy and so for you one of the most important things to keep in mind is like give yourself permission to tell other people like let me sleep on it you know and sometimes i'm gonna sleep on it for a week you know <laughs> <laughs> and 
and because that is impacting your life and that is that is so important um so that's really the most important of all of those things and because in human design we can get so caught up in the details and what is this gate and this energy and what should i be doing like follow that that sacral response where mm -hmm. where's your gut feeling taking you while you for big decisions really consciously slow down when the emotions are high and low and give yourself that grace to only make that big decision when you're back and and really like that calm cool neutral space and you have like all right i wrote out the wave it's a clear yes or it's a yes no yes no so it's a no in that sense right does that resonate yeah big time yeah <laughs> that's just spot on it's like mind reading um yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's sometimes so i have heard people tell me before like you just told me what in two minutes what took me a lifetime to figure out right, right. <laughs> yeah um, and it's interesting too because through these practices we just talked about i have been operating that way now and it's different than i ever operated before yeah and so you know just because i'm listening to myself and just because i'm open you know and yeah. and and accessing myself in different ways than i was before so that's interesting yeah and that's the thing like you know with human design we can we don't need to know human design if we all trust ourselves it's just and that's why i love what you just shared and and i, I really believe there are lots of people in this world that really they live in alignment with their unique energy called human design whatever um because they trust and they have the courage to set boundaries and not do what everybody else is expecting them and dance at all the parties that they're invited to but their trust like no i'm not feeling something feels off i'm not going there or i'm not doing it even though this person is going to be upset but my gut feeling is telling me no right um but like for me and and this is another thing with manifesting generators like one of our purpose is to to find shortcuts in life because we can be we can be really fast and we can sometimes be too fast and then we skip steps and have to redo it, which is very frustrating, as you know, right? But I really feel like just the work that we do, like what you were describing, you know, that is actually a shortcut to the healing. That's a shortcut to find, to really get to know yourself. That's a shortcut to live your most magical life. And I feel like human design combined with these um I, I like to call them deconditioning modalities like what you're practicing right the, the inner healing work and releasing the blocks and all of that stuff and calibrating your nervous system they together are so beautiful because human design is also then this awareness of like like for example with your emotional wave like people understand that there's nothing to fix that's just who I am because many of the things we we want to work on is actually not just let it be and let it be that's serving your purpose right so mm -hmm. that's why I started to love human design so much because it's just like I could not not share this with other people because it was so helpful for myself and um yeah I just feel blessed that it came into my life and it found me right I always say it found me yeah. um and and only the people that are ready for it they will also really it's not for some people like they never need it or then some people may never be open to it and i always say like don't ever force human design onto anybody if people are interested in it like like you today right like you just sent me your chart i didn't ask for it <laughs> and then i responded like are, are you okay to share a little bit about it because i felt like you were generally interested in it right but it would have been okay for me if you're like no i don't want to talk about human design that's okay too you know so I love that. So, and another th a final thing is like, yeah, also I, I wonder like um, if, if that sounds true for you, like when people say something or criticize you, it can be quite painful. Like it hits you at the core. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's devastating. Yeah. yeah, because you know where this is coming from. Like if you look at your chart, you have that throat center defined and then there is a is a line going down you have that 13 33 channel going to the g center and the g center is um it's usually like yellow in in the human design charts um and it's a center for love and direction and so when when somebody says something like oh you did this wrong or you should have done it this way like it hits you and your core and your identity and it's just something again for compassion for yourself there's nothing wrong and it's very helpful with kids too 
because when mm. a child has it, we want to be extra cautious how we like discipline our kids. Like my yeah. daughter has that as actually my daughter has that same channel as you. Um, and the 13 is also about like people come to you and they, they share all their secrets. With you. <laughs> yeah. <Okay? laughs> um, because I have a 13 in my conscious son, but I don't have the full channel, but like literally strangers they, they feel safe around us they're like you may not have ever have met them before or something or sometimes you do know these people but they feel safe because we can keep also those secrets it's not necessarily always to be shared sometimes these are stories we can share later on in an empowered way you know um without even mentioning those people but um yeah it's it's very it, it's just so much fun because it explains all the things yeah. you know and yeah and then and lastly it's really this um um yeah your your experimentation in your life is just huge and for adventure and trying things out and physical activity is also really important for you um because you have that energy from the root which is the the pressure the adrenaline going to your spleen which is the center for health and well-being um and if you don't move your body you don't move your energy it, it can impact that yeah which is I've, I've recently the past like years started just dancing you know just like awesome. just intuitive sort of movement and that has been an absolute life changer wow yeah. Awesome. yeah so cool yeah and then one thing like because your your world center is completely undefined do you feel like you have struggled with like self-worth in your life um you know I, I really don't um maybe maybe when I was really young yeah. um but I, I think I've always pretty much felt pretty good about self-esteem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's amazing because there there's like, I have, so sometimes people with an undefined energy, there's, there's the, the biggest wisdom we can gain in those energies because that center is all about self-worth. Um, and yeah, you also love ability for yourself. It's all connected, right? Um, but sometimes people that have it, because you have it completely open, um, there's also it's sometimes being said that you already mastered that energy in like a past life so um, it, it can be because I have noticed not everybody always struggles with that so it could be that or whatever you have experienced in your childhood you you develop that self-worth for yourself mm. so that is quite beautiful and and then also as, as a manifesting generator in general like your voice is very powerful like you're here to speak and share, like we're doing it today on the podcast, right? Like share your message because you you have this energy of especially love and then your identity. You that's how you express yourself. So um, definitely use that. Well, I appreciate you having me on. I I actually don't. I, I enjoy doing things like this, but in the couple of days leading up to it, I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. You're getting nervous, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But then, but then I do. I love talking to people, and and it's interesting that it's in the chart as well because I do think it's important, especially like you said, like your work found you. That's the way I feel about yeah. mine, as well. and it's almost so potent. It would be wrong to not share it, not in a like stuff it down people's throat sort of way, but like this is here. Mm. just yeah if it serves yeah yeah and see like how it resonates like how do we want to express your voice you can ask yourself like I love podcasting a lot because I mean by now I also do some solo episodes because I've started to become comfortable with it but it takes practice um but I love the conversation because so we can respond right and and also and you, you you probably also love collaboration with other people and things like that you have that energy in your chart as well um so give yourself permission to to find a way to bring your voice out into the world through collaborating with other people and having conversations right mm, yeah so like you did today you did a beautiful job so <laughs> No, I, I really appreciate you having me on. It's yeah, no, and and thank you for the courage for reaching out and you know and checking me out on Instagram and being interested in human design and because uh, I you have a very empowering message to share with the world. I'm also mm -hmm. thankful that you are here with us today. And then, how can people get in touch with you if they would like to work with you? How can they find you? 
Um, so I offer it mainly through Instagram just because I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram at Kim underscore energetics. It's K-I-M as in family underscore energetics. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have an email address you can reach me at as well. And that's just Ken energetics at gmail.com. Mm. Um, so either, either way is good. I have a website launching soon, but not yet because I'm a manifesting generator and I have a lot of things going on. <laughs> right? It's funny. I, I just, uh, I'm in the process of redoing my website and I first time ever I just put a coming soon page and I'm taking my time because I have a lot going on. A good idea. Um, yeah and I also want to say you're using you said it like I'm using Instagram because I like it and that's exactly how it's meant to be so the more you follow this this sequel it, it, it I like it it's fun it, it's it's a pleasure thing right the more you do that the more blissful your life is, the more opportunities come your way. Because as you know, it's the energy we put out there. If you force yourself to be on Facebook because somebody tells you to do, it's not going to work most of the time. Right. And yeah, I've been following that so much because um, having an actual business doing this is is a fairly new occurrence for me. And um, and with my Instagram, it's like, first of all, I'm going to operate my business through Instagram because I like it. And then secondly, mm -hmm. I'm not going to post content You know, like have a schedule or anything because that doesn't work with me. I'm gonna post when I feel led to post by source, you know, and I'm like gonna like infuse it uh -huh. with you know whoever needs to see this post. It can one person could like the post. I don't care because that's gonna be the person that needed to see it that day. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I I follow the same strategy. I'm 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 guided by source. <laughs> I cannot for the for the life of it. Um, Put an Instagram strategy, plan out your next night. <laughs> my whole body is cringing up and I, I do it in the moment. Um, and it, it has been working quite beautifully. And I also love what you say. I, I kind of, because I talked about this with my mastermind sisters yesterday, because, you know, my Instagram by now has like, and only since May this year, it has blown up and it's mm -hmm. now I have like fake accounts and yeah, I get hundreds <laughs> of likes, but it's not about that. It's like the, the quality of people and Oftentimes, also, I want to say this to everybody, like, people don't like your stuff, but they see it. And right. oftentimes, the people buy from you are not the ones that like or comment, right? So mm -hmm. it's, um, I love that you put that out there, because people often, I know myself, when I first entered the online space, like, I felt like a nobody or discouraged, because like, how can I have ever 10,000 followers? But it's not mm -hmm. about, that, you know, so. Yeah, you just you. need the right people, yeah yeah so i love that so thank you emmy for everything i really loved having this conversation with you um and i i'm sure you listeners enjoyed this one it was amazing so thank you for being here thank you so much i really enjoyed it too beautiful and then you listeners i am really excited as always to be with you on the next episode Thank you for listening to this episode. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, then please subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes. And if you also know someone that you know in your heart could benefit from listening to this podcast, then I invite you to please share and help me reach more conscious leaders so we together can create global impact. I truly appreciate you and see you next time.